Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little different from my previous videos, as I am not going to be doing any upgrades or gaming, but rather I am sending a word of caution about upgrading to a third-party AIO in your Alienware. This may even be the same case for older Alienware machines, but I cannot confirm as I've not had any other Alienwares other than this R10. So I figured something out just the other day and was quite surprised on how lucky I was with the EVGA cooler I purchased. As you all already know, I purchased the Alienware R10 Ryzen Edition with the Ryzen 7 3700X. But, what I didn't notice when I was upgrading to the EVGA AIO cooler is that the cooler was Intel specific and not AMD. Now, I don't know how anyone especially myself did not notice the amazon page i shared stated the evga cooler was intel specific shoot there's even a faq page on evga's website that states the cooler will only work on an intel board yeah that's right i screwed up and i bought the intel specific aio cooler and not an amd compatible AIO. but as you know it fit just fine on my Alienware. So in a sense, I ended up screwing up correctly? As you can see here, I have my old Enforce board and the stock Alienware cooler. However, the Enforce board has an AM2 socket, so the CPU mounting screw positions are just slightly different than the AM4. But hopefully this gives you a good visualization how Intel and AMD are different. Also, if you look on the top here, that's obviously the Alienware. And on the bottom is another rig, and that has an AMD AM4 socket with the Cooler Master Cooler. I didn't want to take it apart and try to compare things, I just took pictures. But as you can see, they're clearly different here. And all I'll see, if I didn't screw up and make that purchase of the EVGA Intel specific cooler, I would have had much bigger problems when I upgraded the cooler in my other video. But, I gotta say, this is probably just Dell trying to make things simple on their end, rather than make a totally another board for AMD cards. They can just put on a new socket, update the BIOS, and they're good to go for an AMD CPU. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video to give everyone a word of caution when upgrading their CPU cooler on their Alienware. No, it won't catch on fire or anything crazy like that, just might be incompatible. I really wish I would have realized this prior to making my first video when I upgraded it, as some of you may have already made a purchase. If you did and it was incompatible, I'm really, really sorry I didn't see this sooner and let you know. But hopefully whoever you purchase it from, you can make an exchange or return, and it's not too much trouble. If you haven't purchased an upgraded cooler yet and are planning to, I hope this helps guide you in the correct direction when making your selection. But I would say measure, measure, measure your CPU mounting screw locations first, just to be extra sure. I'm pretty sure the screw holes for all Alienware machines will be the Intel location, even when you get the AMD CPU as I showed you today. But again, just double check before you order one as I'm not 100% on that. And if you did purchase an AMD Alienware and the screw holes are set up for an AMD cooler, let me know in the comments. I really would like to know. That would be very interesting to me to see when this happened. Maybe it's a newer board that came after or possibly something in the past. Well, that's all for me today. I thank you for stopping by to watch my rant on the screw locations on the Alienware board and Hopefully this helps some of you all out if you choose upgrading the CPU cooling on your Alienware. Have a great rest of your day, and take care.